Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my C programming tutorial. It has been a very long time since I've wanted to do one of these, but let's cut right to the chase. So, lesson one is going to cover Hello World, something simple, and also the history of the C language. In the 1960s, Dennis Ritchie at Bell Labs developed the C language as an extension of the B language. C has become one of the most widely used programming languages in the history of computing. It gained so much popularity that C compilers of all different types were popping up everywhere, and various vendors were available for the majority of existing computer architectures. It used to be that C was used in operating system programming and is still somewhat of the case today. However, now it's used more towards embedded systems. And for those who don't know, I'm an embedded systems engineer, so I use C pretty much every day. C can be kind of confusing, especially when learning it at first. I remember when I first learned C, it was way over my head, and I had a lot of trouble grasping onto the concepts of it. But once I started practicing it and using it, I realized the power of it and actually developed a love for it. And before you know it, I started to study microprocessing systems and microcontrollers, and I've decided to take my career in the path of microcontroller development. So I'm here to share the wonderful gift of programming with the world, whether that be to make a homework assignment tomorrow night or just to make an invention work. Nevertheless, let's get started. So I don't think it's any use to do a Hello World demo, because I can show you how to do that in about five minutes, without some type of understanding of what's going on. So let me explain down the ladder why programming languages are so important. So as a human, we can't just tell computers what to do. They need to have instructions. These instructions are defined by an architecture. On the lower layer of that, it's really just a bunch of ones and zeros. So the computer will interpret these ones and zeros in such a special way that it will execute instructions. These instructions are collected together in what's called an instruction set, and depending on your architecture, they change. But how do we get from human to computer? How can I tell a computer what to do? Well, the answer isn't actually all that complicated. There are many different ways to program instructions, and C is one of them. There are many different types of C compilers. There's, K there's GCC, Clang, Intel C, Microsoft Visual Studio, and there's even special types of compilers, like the MIPS Pro compiler and things like that, that handle architectures that are less common. The compiler will run through your C files, link them together, generate instructions based on your code, and the processor will then execute these instructions as the compiler had composed them, and eventually you have stuff being done. It's really not all that bad. It's a little more complicated when you dig into it, but on the high level, that's pretty much how it works. If you want you talking to translate into machine code, you need to program it, send it through a compiler, and then the computers kind of do the rest at that point. Here's the problem. There's a lot of mistakes you can make even if the compiler allows you to do them. It's kind of like life. When you're by yourself making a decision, no one's going to stop you from making mistakes. The more attuned you are to your environment, the more you understand your surroundings, and the more experience you have, well, the better decisions you're going to make. And it's the same case with programming in C. Yes, there are a lot of places that you can get caught and things that can slide by, but experienced programmers will know how to handle these things and also work with them to their advantage. If you're really interested in learning C, you're going to have to use a compiler. I like using GCC because it's the most standardized, generally, compiler that's available. And if you're on Windows, MinGW will do you just fine. I'll put that in the description. If you're on Linux, you either have GCC built in already, or you just have to do a simple pull down from the repository manager. A couple Google trips will get you in the right direction with that. The second option is to use an online compiler, which I will also link in the description. I kind of avoid against these because while it is nice to get C code somewhat working, it's nothing's going to beat the real thing. You're going to want to get a real compiler installed on your computer. That's just my opinion. And with that, we're off to the demo. All right, so at this point, I'm going to assume that you have some type of compiler installed and ready to go. I'm going to be using Qt Creator, which is a text editor. It's an awesome text editor, really easy to use. I'll link it that in the description as well. And I'm using Windows PowerShell, which is an extension of the Windows command prompt in accordance with GCC. So one way to test that GCC is working and installed correctly is you type in GCC and hit enter. And if it says fatal error, no input files, compilation terminated, instead of command unknown, you know that GCC is installed, at least correctly for now. 
Okay, so before we get to the command po uh, portion of it here, and we'll talk about making make files in another lesson, which makes this much easier, let's just do one file for now. So C automatically selects the entry point for the application keyworded as main, so your main function will be the start of everything. But before we do that, let's talk about what generally goes at the top of C files. So at the top of C files, there's what's called generally an include chain. And an include chain basically means you're able to include other pieces of code or other libraries inside your file for functionality purposes. So one of the most commonly used ones is called standard IO or stdio.h. So standard IO provides general functionality for most of the C functions itself. Without libraries, you really won't be able to do a whole lot. You could build things from the ground up, but these are here to help you. The next thing is going to be your entry point for the application, as I said before, which is main. Now, this is not valid C syntax, and I'll explain why. C says, in order for a function to be valid, it needs to have a type specified in front of it. So we will go over types at a different lesson, but int is what we're going to start to use. Main is the name of the function. So, I will put in the comments above here. For C functions, so C functions need a type and a name. Okay, so in this case, let's do type. So in this case, it would be type name, and then inside here are parameters. We'll talk about functions later, too. So this is essentially what we're looking at. So we need a type, and a type can be pulled off from the list of types that you have, and then a name, and the name is in front of parentheses. Then we need two parentheses, one open, one close, in order to close out the function scope. And then functions will do things with inside curly brackets. So all the instructions you put and all the things you put inside these curly brackets, this function main will perform. Simple enough, right? Okay, so I hope I've lost, I haven't, I hope I haven't lost anybody at this point, but let's, let's move forward now. Okay, so style with indentations generally varies. Some people like eight spaces, some people like two tabs, one tab, four spaces. It really doesn't matter as long as you stay consistent. So I've had I've been programming for a little over six years now, and from the first day I started programming, style-wise, my professor said, I don't really care as long as you're consistent. Fast forward to present day, we do have coding standards, but as long as you're consistent seems to be the industry preference, because nobody would want to see code that looks like this. And then three lines later, you got this. Okay, that really doesn't make a whole lot of sense now, does it? Keep it consistent. So in this case, we're going to use four spaces. All right, so as I talked about before, this library standard I.O. that we're including, I'll talk about includes in a later date, but for right now, we'll just use this. Essentially, what we're doing here is we're including the library standard I.O., standard input output, okay? Standard input output has a function called printf, and printf is probably one of the most notorious functions in C altogether. Everybody uses printf because printf essentially allows you to print types, to print data to the console, which is what we just had pulled up right here. So the console will display feedback of the program as it's running. You don't need to use printf, but you can, and it's very helpful, especially for figuring out issues and debugging. So to do hello world, let's call printf. Printf is a great way to print to the command line. Okay, so printf has one argument, all the way up to as many as you want, as long as you have parameters to print from. We just want to print a string. So a string is delimited by quotation marks. And let's say I want to say, hello world. Something to note here, 
This will print hello world, but will not return to the next line. So let's go through it. Okay, so now we're gonna compile this guy. So we want to use GCC, as I said, installed before. The next argument we're going to put is the name of the file, which is specified however you have named it, right? Hello world C. We want to turn it into an object, an executable, which is dash O, is a flag in the compiler. And then we want to change we want to specify to the compiler what we want that file to be named. So let's review it one more time. GCC, you want to use the program for the compiler. Hello world C is the file you want to compile. Dash O, lowercase o, basically says, I want to compile this into an object, an executable, and I want to name this executable hello world. So the next step is to hit enter. Once you hit enter and it returns to the next line, you know that GCC has done its job. If it has any warnings or errors for you, it will let you know before you do this. Once it's returned to the next line, you have no warnings or errors. Now you can move on to actually running the program. So the first two characters you'll always want to use if you want to run a program you just compiled is the period and the forward slash. Then you want to fill in this name here, what we just did. That's what we told the compiler to dump the executable as. All right, and once you run, hello world. So this is the hello world tutorial, and there's really not a whole lot more to this, but I just want to say that there's a lot more going on here that I'm not explaining, and it kind of bothers me, but I have to temper that because I realize people's attention spans aren't that long, and I tend to ramble. So I will break it up into different lessons, but for right now, this is at least how to do Hello World. Thanks for watching episode one. Really appreciate it. Hey everyone, it's James from Zygal Studios. So thank you for watching my tutorial on how to program in C. There's going to be more videos coming in the future, so if you could hit the subscribe button, I'd really appreciate it. I've wanted this series to take off for a while, so please, if you could, show some support and like and comment on the video if it helped you. If you guys have any suggestions for future videos, please put them in the comments below. Thanks so much, and hope to see you back here again soon.